Welcome back. This is the last and final video on the topic of titrations, and you see the title is not titrations, it says buffer. Well, titrations and buffer are sort of interrelated, and in many ways, uh, I think one sort of explains the other. Now, buffer is not a concept that's only pertaining to a chemistry class, it, it's much more than that. Now, your, your blood is a buffer medium because it constantly adjusts itself to maintain the blood at a certain pH so that you can have a normal life. And if you get sick and you go to a hospital and they give you a buffer, well, that buffer has to be at a certain pH to meet the needs. So buffer is a very, very important concept that extends far beyond a chemistry class, right? Now, how do you make a buffer? Even if you don't sit or you don't want to sit and make one, you still want to know how it's made. There are primarily two types of buffer. There's an acid buffer and there's a basic buffer. Okay, hospitals typically carry an acid buffer. Again, I don't know too much about medicine, so I'm not going to comment on the basic buffer part, but from what I do know is they do carry acid buffers a lot for IV reasons. Right now, how do you make a buffer? Well, first of all, your acid or base cannot be strong, period. It has to be weak. So you need a weak acid and its corresponding salt. Similarly, you need a weak base and its corresponding salt. That's what I just said. Now, this also relates to the idea of the lowry Bronston that we learned. I do want to complete and say how it's related when I'm done with this video. So say I pose this question, and this is a very, very popular question on most standardized exams, such as in CAT or any of the dental pharmacy exams, or even nursing exams to a certain extent. The question asks you, say you are imposed the duty to make a buffer, and you have to decide, you have a bunch of weak acid and their salts, and you have to decide, can this make a buffer? Well, it's very difficult say this is all i give you no numbers you don't say you don't know the molar mass or any of that your your job is to actually first figure out can this combination make a buffer well that's a tough question for some people it's easy probably for a chemist but it's not so easy for anybody else but let me share you a very very simple tip that you can use it instantaneously to decide whether that combination could lead to a potential buffer, okay? The difference in the number of hydrogen between the two pair must be one. Let me repeat, must be one. It cannot be two, it cannot be zero, it cannot be two. Now, always subtract a small value from a large value, so you get a positive number, stay positive, okay? Let's not go negative. So on the first combination, you've got two hydrogens, right? You got one. So it's two minus one is one hydrogen. So this combination will make a buffer. You go to the second one, you got two hydrogens and a zero hydrogen in the other pair, which leads to a difference of two hydrogens. This cannot be a buffer combination. Same thing with the third one, you got three hydrogens and zero hydrogens in the other pair, which leads to a difference of three hydrogens. This combination also cannot result in a difference. The fourth one is, well, we got three minus two, which is one hydrogen. Bingo. This combination can okay. And then this combination also is four minus three is one hydrogen. This can result in a buffer as well. Now, Typically, if you use a weak acid and it's salt, then you make an acid buffer, and you use a weak base and it's salt, then you must make a basic buffer. But some acids have more than one salt, so you need to make sure that that salt contains, that salt and its parent acid would lead to a difference of one hydrogen for it to be a buffer. 
Now, titration involves the idea of buffer, uh, and we'll get to that in a separate discussion point. But for now, that's how you do buffer, and it's the video on titrations, at least at the very qualitative primitive level, and I'll see you back.